Okay, I'll press the go live button and no, I'm not even ready. That's probably a mistake, but I'll do it anyway. Press the start streaming button. Let's see it come through. Excellent connection. Hi, you're with Scotty Hotty. I'm Ganji Kid. I'm the Grave Kipper. I'm the Super Chuffer. This is Battery Exhausted, my B-side channel. Let's check that I can hear that through. Excellent connection. Yo. Yeah, okay. I'm going to tweet. I'm going to tell everyone. Oh, wait, don't open up Twitter with your messages because everyone will see them. I'll just open up Twitter here and I'm going to tweet. I'm going to tweet out the screenshot. Oh, that's Martin Leake and I. I'm going to tweet out my thumbnail from this. Uh, live on stream now. Open brackets pre TBS for a short review featuring featuring uh, DSP Gaming Phil. Burnell and Martin Leitke, exclamation point. And then I want the actual link to my stream. How do I do that? How do I get that? Oh, no, wait, 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 my face is being slightly cut off when I was doing that typing. I'm going to move that so I can see more of my face. And, uh, <laughs> gosh, gosh, how do I get a copy of the link for the, the chuffers? I suppose I just open up my own YouTube, but open up my own YouTube, open up the damn stream, open up YouTube. There I am streaming, and copy that, copy that. Shut up, you, and then paste it there. Probably highlight the fact that I'm live on stream now. In some way, highlight. You can't highlight things now, can you? you used to when you were at school, you used to highlight all the time using your highlighter. Now, no, no more highlighting. Right, live on stream now. I'll tweet that out. If anyone wants to come and watch, they can. Otherwise, this is a live recording session. I'm not here all the time on Battery Exhaust. I'm going to try and increase the frequency so people will know that I'm here and then they'll turn up. But uh, today, this evening, we're doing a Battery Exhausted Randomer. I've got this in beer in my bonnet about the, the shorts. So there's two people that I follow. There's loads of people that I follow on the internet that... Phil is considered a lol cow. I'll get that out there early doors. Dark side Phil is considered a lol cow, which means he's a chuffing, chuffer, chuffing, chuffer, chuffer, idiot. And he, people make him... <laughs> Define lol cow. People milk them for laughs. Define lol cow. It's a person you get laughs from who doesn't know they're being made fun of. So... They're unaware of it. Phil's aware of it. They can often think they're admired for what they're doing, but secretly they're laughed at constantly. Okay, see that obese lady dancing on cam? She's such a, she's such a lol cow. Okay, right. There is, because for me, it's a very strange line. Um, that obese girl dancing on webcam. Like, I actually know that there's... We'll bring, the, we'll bring her into it as well. We'll bring her into it as well. I feel bad to bring her into it. But uh, like, I think people might be laughing at this girl and encouraging her to make these ASMR videos that aren't particularly ASMR-esque. And, like, snoring and... And doing strange... <laughs> some strange things. There was a belly dancing video. There was a... Actually, I can find it like this, can't I? If I just do search, belly. Because right, I've been looking for a belly dancer to come on my show. So, this is ASMR, apparently. So, I know that recently, okay, <laughs> this is a different story. I don't know why I started with this. I don't know why I led with this. Now, now we're down this road. Now we're down this rabbit hole. Recently, I was aware of uh, an ASMR content creator that created a collaboration video where he encouraged or solicited other people to send him belly dancing videos. And, like, it's part of a wider story, I suppose. Um, obviously, I didn't send him any belly dancing videos of me, but... Uh, 
So what I wanted to talk about today... <laughs> Phil is a lol cow, isn't he? Dark side Phil is... Oh, I've got to get my windows in order. More windows than Buckingham Palace. We can get rid of the definition of lol cow now. There's, there's me tweeted that. We can get rid of that now. That can go. This is Phil. I wanted to talk about how not to shorts. How not to shorts. I wanted to talk about Martin Leaker, who we talked about before. And I'm going to start folding in. I'm going to do DSP detractor content. But I'm also going to fold in uh, other people and widen the net a bit. Maybe there are some people out there. I keep looking around because I'm trying to make myself a little chiefer, a little chimney chiefer, my smokage. But I can't find my damn tobacco. And I've had it just recently. Oh, no. I suppose I could just roll it pure. That's a bit of a hectic suggestion, isn't it? Got an old one here, an old dried up backy, like an old, an old dried up minge. Um, right, so <laughs> the reason I wanted to bring different people, I just want to widen my net, and I think it's worth cons like this. I can't, I haven't got the time to keep my foot on all of the these necks, <laughs> but someone needs to. So, um, what I'm basically going to do today is we're going to look at some shorts. We're going to look at the good, the bad, and the ugly of shorts, and I'm going to try and explain to people like Phil. Phil, if you're watching, I should have said this right at the start. Phil, this one's for you. Phil, this is for you. If you watch this dark side, Phil, or anyone on the internet that's considering making short form content, hello, Cat Ballyhoo, into the Lolcalverse. Exactly. It's that sort of business, isn't it? Martin Leake is in charge of Flat Earth British. <laughs> uh, I mean, Phil is Phil. I don't have to explain him. And then this lady is. Well, I just, I mean, I don't want to see it. The thing about this lady, actually, and we are going to talk about her and her shorts as well. The thing about this lady is that she's probably quite a nice person like to get on with and hang out with. She's probably quite nice. Like, she's not mean. She's not venomous. She's not nasty and she's not... Uh, doing she, is she doing money kinesis? No, not really. So yeah, she's not really desperate for the clawing for the money. She has got some friends that are desperate and clawing for the money. One of them tweeted this week. Uh, I didn't clip it for this show, but one of them tweeted, "Oh, I've lost my job, and I'm going to need your support. And can you click on my videos? And could you also click on the adverts?" And I was like, "That's not." <laughs> but I just left it anyway. Um, but she's also got some shorts, so I'm going to fold her in because, like, I think lol cowery, like we just saw, was about not being self-aware. So I think she's more lol cow than others, and I just I don't want to be mean to her. Like some of her stuff is is okay, some of her stuff is bad, um, and she's an example of how to and not to make shorts as well. Like she actually gets some of them right as well. I would say like some of them are not bad. Maybe so. It's about context. So <laughs> we're going to look at some really bad shorts from Phil, from Martin Leaker. I'm also going to expose you to some really good shorts. Some when I say really good, I mean really good. So the good, bad, and the ugly. Let's start with with the good, the bad, and the uglier. Yeah? Let's start with the good. Crazy Graper, I think this is called. Graper. I'm not saying like when people want to say rape these days, they say grape. <laughs> Hello, King Joel. Um, always start your YouTube by telling people you're just making a quick YouTube short. <laughs> Does Phil do that? Does he do it live on camera? I know that Phil, uh, I do, you know, watch enough of him to know what he's up to, but um, I've seen him make a short live on camera. Like I'm making a reefer now where I should have made this beforehand. Should have been prepared. I've seen him make, and we'll run this show into that being said as well. I should have said that, you know, at 9.30 when that being said comes off, we'll just run into that. I don't know how to raid them, but I'll just, you know, go there at the end. Uh, so, these days, if you don't want to say the rude words, if you don't want to say, like, you know, Jeffrey Epstein, if you don't want to say pedo, because YouTube will shut you down, then instead you say things like grape instead of raping. And, and like, here they're called crazy grape, graper. So I don't know if that means... Look, this is an example of good shorts, anyway. So, and these are good, and I'll show you for why. I'll, you've got to scroll down a bit, really, to get the, the real feel of it. Because it changes, look. You see how they change? See how the old shorts are different? See how the old shorts are different? And the new shorts, when I scroll up again, because now I'm going up again, see how they start to come together and seem to be quite similar now. They all seem a bit more similar because they crack the code. One of the main things people should understand about shorts before we go any further is that when you upload a short to YouTube, you upload it in iPhone-style, you know, phone-style format. I say iPhone, 
phone format. So you can edit on your computer, but you have to edit in this format. Yeah, you upload it to YouTube. I don't know what it's like, you know, 14 by three or, you know, whatever it is, it's, it's funny format. Like you edit them to YouTube. I'll show you my shorts as well, actually, in a minute. Uh, I've done various ones. Uh, edit them on that format. Most people these days are just doing it on their phone. So you don't have to edit it to that format in Final Cut Pro. You just do it on your damn phone. That's what shorts are for. They're for the TikTok generation who are using TikTok to share short form videos. And they used to have Vines. I don't know if you remember Vines. We'll look at some of them in a minute as well. But you make them on your phone. You share them on your phone. It's like TikTok generation. And it's like Tinder. I mean, I'm talking to the educated here, aren't I? But it's like Tinder. You, you flick, oh, there's a short. Oh, there's another one. There's another one. You flick through them and you're just watching short form content instead of watching long form content on YouTube like your granddad did. Like if you're a young kid now, if you're someone at that, about the age of, I don't know, 12 to 18, you're watching short form content and your granddad is on YouTube, yeah? And you don't want to be where your granddad is. Like you don't want to be on the same website as your granddad. Young people are not using Facebook because their grandparents are on it. They want to be on a different website, somewhere cool. So Shorts is an attempt <laughs> by YouTube to funnel off some of that traffic into back into YouTube and say, hey, we're cool too. It's not just your granddad. So I'm going to show you some modern, funny, top quality shorts and I'm going to explain why they're good. First of all, it was worth noting, you're made on your phone, edited on your phone, uploaded from your phone in this portrait plat uh, format and then you, you tag it, hashtag, hashtag. And the reason you tag it hashtag shorts is because YouTube then sees it as a short and puts it on this shorts list. If you don't get those things right, if you're not doing it in format, if you're not in the right format, if you haven't hashtag shorts, you're not under a minute, it's not going on this list. And the other reason that they've tagged hashtags here is because they've tagged the hashtag TikTok, look. TikTok, I wonder why they've done that. <laughs> and another one they've done is Sigma meme, you'll see why, and funny. And that's it, that's all the hashtags. They've not gone mental with the hashtags. They're just really directly at the things. That, you know, the more hashtags you do, the more confusing it is for the algorithm. Do you want to be seen over here or over here? Well, I want people who like TikToks, memes, and funny. And also this, and also this, and also this. And no, no, don't and also this, because you're you're creating more and more of a niche. Like you're now looking for a Venn diagram where someone likes funny TikToks and also basketball and also gaming and also don't put too many. Just just the ones that are pertinent and make them reasonably broad. Okay, and then make shorts, okay? Make them like this. Make them like this. Let's just watch a few of these and you'll see exactly why these are damn good shorts. So Sigma, Sigma, watch Sigma. First of all, it's a meme. You need to know that. If you don't know that, it's a meme. You had Alpha male, Omega male, Beta male, Sigma. It's like, oh God, do I have to explain that? I suppose I should. Um, Sigma is like a form of... Uh, Let's just put Sigma male. It's like a, a meme. It's a male that occupies a position outside a social group or hierarchy, a lone wolf or a maverick. And if you look on the images, you will see the, the meme image of this face from uh, American Psycho. Uh, that face from American Psycho is the Sigma me meme face. Sigma male. And you're just confident in yourself. You're an outsider. You don't care about anyone else. You're confident in yourself. Um, it's like a meme thing. Anyway, so they've taken this meme. We're going to get there. Hello, Derek. Derek, the best YouTube channel ever. DSP Gaming uses hashtags in a positive and meaningful way. I, I often wonder, is this a, a fake Derek or is this the real Derek? <laughs> because sometimes I can't tell whether like that would be one or the other. But awoo, either way, awoo. <laughs> Um, if it is a fake Derish, then it's surprisingly bang on with, it's like they've entered into the Derish verse. Um, so anyway, let's watch a few of these. Now we know we set it up. Look, Sigma Girl Reaction. Let's have the volume back up, actually. I've I've buggered up the volume. First of all, let's watch a random video of theirs so I can Building increase the your volume. Online oh, the volume's up high. Okay, what? Why no volume on my shorts, then? Why no volume on my shorts? I, wa I wanted this one. Where did it gone? Ah, I set it up. Sigma Girl Reaction. I'm just going to pause it there. Did you see her face at the end? That was good, wasn't it? She was doing the face of the meme. The meme face, the Sigma face. Now, realise this. It's at the end. You want to see that again. This is real overarching theme of shorts. You need to see it again. 
So why would you want to watch it again? Sometimes, they'll, I'll show you this later, they make a clever roll and it, it just goes on forever. And you don't realise you're watching it again. But here, the clever thing is, is that the best bit, the cool bit, the thing, oh, that was cool, I like the look of that face, let me see that face again, it comes at the end. So now we're going to watch it again because we want to see the face. There's one, big tick. Number two, this is an edited sequence. It's like a joke or a sketch. Remember sketch shows, remember the telly. Remember before the kids were young like they are today and they are all watching everything on their phones. You know, in the, the, the sitting room of your grandparents' house, they've got the big window, but it's not a window, it's on the wall. Or it might even be on a chest of drawers or something. It's a big, like, panel. Like a, like, a t like a monitor for a computer. Like a computer monitor. Like a big phone. Do you remember when... You know when you go around your granddad's house and they've got the big phone on the, um, on the, the chest of drawers there? And it, what that is is television. People used to watch their media through, like, a big screen. Like a cinema, but at their house. Not a phone. No, not a virtual reality headset, no. Not a computer monitor, a television. Phil's got one to play games on. So, <laughs> this, like, nowadays, we're different format. Forget the format, this has gone beyond that. It's like a sketch. It's like something that would have made the television, boomer phone, it's like something that would have made the television, like, on the television, like sketches, but they've done it just as a 60-second thing. It's almost like you've made an advert you know how clever adverts are, you know, the clever adverts, you know that clever advert for the thing, and it turned out that, oh, it's funny, that advert, oh, do you remember when the adverts were funny? And then, that's all a short, but what they've done is they've lit it, look, first of all, right, I'll take you through, it's lit, they've put a blue light behind, the house doesn't normally have a blue light like that, they've lit it to appeal to the generation of neon light enthusiasts on TikTok, you know, they've lit it, they've dressed up cool, Please note, they're not like you wouldn't go and record a skit, would you, on your TV show and just turn up. Like, you know, when Phil turns up, I'm going to relate this to Phil now. Phil has already said this a million times. It doesn't like make an effort. He's just a normal person wearing a t shirt. I've decided after I've heard him say that, from now on on streams, I'm wearing a shirt and a blazer. From now on, might just be a t shirt sometimes, but I'm going to keep the blazer on. I'm, I've decided to make an effort. <laughs> Phil doesn't make an effort. He's just sat there with his clothes on. Yeah, he's got the LED lights now through no fault of his own. But here we are. They've lit it and it's edited look. So here she comes. Oh, he's jumped out. Uh, and you don't have to have language here. We don't have to. This is the reason this is so good is because it's phys visual, physical comedy and it's got a payoff. Oh, it's so, it's, it's so, you could make a series of sketches like this. They do. And so, uh, close up of her. That's an edited shot. They've cut to her close up. No reaction. Oh, he's sad. He didn't get a reaction. So, little nod of the head. They're telling a story. I know that most of you are educated on this. This is for Phil. I want Phil to understand this. I really want him to get this in his head. So, I'm going through it segment by segment so he really understands. The nod of the head. We know, she knows. There's some anticipation here. They're creating a story through a very short series of little pictures that they've edited together, and each one draws you into the next. I don't want to switch this off now. I'm not going to flick off on this short, because I want to see what's about to happen. She's nodded. He's done the face. There's some anticipation inbuilt. Here she comes. We know what's about to happen. He's going to jump out, but here she comes again. So we're repeating the theme. So it's a joke. They've said, here is your premise. Here is the premise again, and now we're going to throw a twist in. <laughs> Oosh, that was funny. Physical comedy. Funny. Ooh, there's the Sigma face. And you did want to see it, didn't you? You did. You did want to see it. There's the Sigma face. That's the best bit. And she's good at doing it, the face. And they've put, like, they've lit her. And she's looking cool. She's got the clothes on. And she looks cool. And she does the face. And also, I don't know if this is a subtle thing. I think it might be a feature of stabilization on the phone. But there's a subtle move in the phone as her face goes. And it's like, it kind of... See that move with the eyebrows, like the eyebrows and the move. See, now I've got to watch the short again because that move captivated me in some way. Something about that move of the camera when she did the eyebrows. Now I'm on to watch number three episode of the same short because I enjoyed it the first time. The second time I wanted to see what I was enjoying again and that face. And the third time I'm like, did the camera move? So we've got this like reason to repeat. That's another good thing about a short is a reason to repeat. It doesn't have to be this. We can look at other things in the, again, like we're going to look at lots of shorts today, hopefully in the intervening time between now and that being said. But that to me is like a perfect short. And I'll tell you something else as well. I don't know if everyone remembers this, but they used to have vines. Do you remember vines? Do you remember vine? Back when 
back when you you were a child, back when the people that were watching your videos, which weren't even born. Do you remember back when the people that watched your videos weren't even born, Phil? Like Phil the other day was talking about stuff, like talking about retro games again, and does like seems to not realise there were people that watch his videos that weren't even born. Like that they're grand. Oh, not vines. I don't want vines. I want vine the the damn. See, vine is so old you can't even can't even find it on the internet anymore. But this is the perfect vine. These are the perfect vines. This is a super compilation of vines. So I don't want to. I want them to be short. So this is one. This was short. This was original Nimi. No, it's an advert. Ah, ah what well, he deserves is adverts, doesn't he, Limmy? I mean, he's he's paid his dues. He's paid his dues. Now I'll pay mine. I'll sit here and watch an advert about stockbroking. I haven't got any money for stockbroking. Fuck off, Keith of Sutherland. If I did, I wouldn't give it to you. Right, here we go. <laughs> and that was a vine. That was a vine. That was like a seven-second comedy skit. I don't know. If like they're linked together here. The comedy skit is he's found an empty bottle of cider on the side of the road. He's pulling the face. <laughs> and he's having a go at the traffic. And the vine, it's a simple joke, isn't it? Because in Scotland, you drive past alcoholics all the time. And so Limmy's pretending to be one when he finds this, this rubbish on the side of the floor. Here's another take of the same concept. See now, I tell you, the interesting thing here is he's, he's moved on. He started just, the first one was the simple idea. Now he's moved on. We've even got a bit of edit as he sees the bottle. He wants it to make more clear that I'm, I'm finding this bottle. <laughs> but less of a cut between that and I'm straight into the, the, the cars because now we know, <laughs> now we know that uh, the concept, we can play, it's a meme, isn't it? It's a meme as well as a joke. That's what memes are. They're ideas that everyone plays with and you all understand because you know the basic premise, but you see the twist on it. It's a meme. It's a joke. A lot of what's going to happen in that being said, just after this episode, we're going to be on that being said, aren't we? Um, and then uh, a lot of those jokes that carry through the Derish World Order and stuff like that, they're meme-based, aren't they? Because they're ideas that carry through and once someone's presented the idea, we all understand it and you can make a little tweak on it and everyone can understand it. It's a meme. Memes are popular on the internet. Phil, remember Phil. I'm talking to you, Phil. And you might not understand this British style humour, Phil, but these are great. These these vines are brilliant. See how, see how he stepped it up there? Now he's got his shirt off. So it's the same joke. It's a running joke. And it's funnier because it's a running joke that we're now twisting and, and taking a step on. Oh my God, I'm <laughs> <laughs> he nearly resisted that one, didn't he? This is the, my favourite. This is his actual son. <laughs> <laughs> he left the buggy. You've got to commit to a joke. If you're going to do a bit, you've got to commit. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> And then this is the final one. I love this so much. Limmy actually has been through alcoholism and has decided to stop drinking, as have I. Uh, I don't know if we've ever... Like, it's hard to define what alcoholism is, an alcoholic, but there was a point in my life where I realised I would finish work and drink, and then I would be looking forward to that moment, and I would drink every day, and that would help me get through to the next day. So I stopped doing it entirely. But this is the final... He's moved up. You see, he went in the shop. He saw the, the, the pull of the vine in the shop. I, I, I believe it's implied that he became an alcoholic. And now, being a regular drinker of that, uh, he's now moved up to Tenant Super, which is like a step up in alcoholism. <laughs> yeah, I'll get you out of the meeting. It's absolutely crucial to nail this. Blam, <laughs> blam. <laughs> So there were some vines, they were like, that was a long time ago when, uh, you know, when people used to watch the television, Limmy's vines, and there are lots of them, there are hours of them, so they're well worth a watch if you haven't discovered them already, but uh, I wanted to compare that, okay, to this, because it's a running theme, it's a meme, yeah? So if I go to the next crazy grapper meme, like me, oh wait, there's something we didn't mention, there's one final thing, what Limmy was doing on in the old days, Limmy's vines, they didn't have music, because... Oh, 
they didn't have the opportunity to edit music on it to touch of a button on your phone but tiktok does in tiktok music is everything phil phil in TikTok, music is everything. It's why they do the dances. It's how they share the memes. TikTok and music are, are like, like bread, meat, and gout. <laughs> TikTok and music are hand in hand. So, uh, what's important to note as well in the modern world of YouTube, the reason they're trying to get these music licenses sorted out so everyone can just music, use music on YouTube is because they want to, to have that ability to you create better media with that music at your fingertips and it's part of the media so to stop people from using it to make their stuff would prevent them or preclude them from being monetized no one would make any no one would bother would they no one would be doing it but the fact that you can get through that with a record company so their stuff still gets lots and lots of views and monetized and they use it oh it's good for everyone so the music here is a huge part i'm going to watch this one one more time it's a really good now that we've seen how that you can develop an idea, how you can create a sketch, how you can write a little joke and record it, there's one final touch, which is the music. And I want you to notice when it kicks in. It kicks in on the Sigma meme face, doesn't it? So you have to wait all the way till the beat kicks in for the payoff and that payoff it's subtle but it's psychological you want to hear that beat kick in don't you it's a, like it doesn't matter that i'm not really into that kind of music or this like you want to hear the beat kick in it's one of those modern records with the speeded up singing that the kids like See what's happening? It's a little joke. She's in charge. He's scared of her. There's the face. Got the song. We've got it kicking in. Now we're into now we're into somewhere, aren't we? Now now we know what we can start doing. Like when they discovered this formula, and it didn't start out like this, but now I'll take their most recent one and it would include all of these things. <laughs> she's so bad she's so bad see it's a different track but it included all those things didn't it we had a setup we had a premise we had a reason to keep watching a story that was happening we had well edited shots that were well lit well filmed and at the end the payoff was funny like it was a twist The twist here is he's doing the face at the end. He's both happy and angry at the same time because he got ignored. But she did touch the phone and, and say, like, the twist there is he's doing the face. See the theme? These are great, great shorts from Crazy Graper here. Like they're absolutely, you know, number one top tier shorts. And that's why, that's why they've got uh, 5.3 million views, 8.9 million views, 5 million views, 4.5 million views. The new one, 1.3 million views, 10 million views, uh, 7 million views, 13 million views. Another point that I haven't made that I really want to drive home before we get onto Phil's works. So now we're going to compare it to Phil and then Martin. Uh, and we want, we're going to watch some more good shorts as well. We're going to keep bouncing back and forth. But another point here is please note the thumbnail. When you upload a short, it's 60 seconds or shorter. Hopefully shorter because they're supposed to be short. Don't drive on too long. It picks a thumbnail automatic. And it will do that by just choosing a frame somewhere reasonably in the middle. So you can choose what your thumbnail is if you either A, make sure the middle bit includes the frame that you want and are lucky enough that it happens, 
which is important. You've got to make sure that middle frame of your thing has the, the thumbnail you want. And you've got to hope that it, you know, because it's going to snapshot it essentially from your video. Or B, you upload it and it doesn't work. And you think, I don't like that thumbnail. We've got the wrong frame. So what you do then is you delete it and you re-upload it. And then, I don't like that one. We've got the wrong frame. It might take the same frame a couple of times. But if you re-upload it a few times, it might be that sometimes it does choose a different frame because it's happening slightly randomly. And you might get a much better thumbnail than a, a previously thought frame. So... What may have happened here is that they've edited the video carefully so that in the middle of the video, especially these two here with the dog and with her face, like they're really good thumbnails. This one with his face crying is a really good thumbnail. Like you want that good thumbnail, it's important. So part of your video recording session has to include making sure that what we film looks really good as a thumbnail. And then part of your uploading has to include re-uploading if you don't happy with the thumbnail. Let's watch this one. She was crying because she was flat chested and he saw her, so she threw the water on her face. Pure poetry. You know, that's good. That's good comedy. And Crazy Graper, we're going to come back to them in a minute, I suppose. Or maybe I'll do it now. Maybe I'll just show you. If I scroll right down, good comedy, making comedy. Yeah? Little comedy skits. Now, you've got loads of these. You could have done a comedy series on telly. Sketch show. It's a telly sketch show. Imagine that, Phil. Like a sketch show on the telly. But you're just doing each sketch as a short. These are good shorts, and I want to just pick out two more features, but I'm going to come back to them later. But I did want to show you, they didn't always start out with that level of uh, polish. You know, they've built up to this, they've worked at it, they've iterated on it, they've worked at it, they've iterated on it, and eventually they've got to where they are today. But that style, those ideas, that theme, that repeatable meme, the, the lighting, all of that isn't present early doors. They build up to it, they get there. But you have to go through this iterative process of working on something over and over again to, to get somewhere. But this is an earlier one. Dans un ballon gonflable. <laughs> Simple thing. Simple thing. Makes sense to me. Okay, right, let's see how Phil is using this same medium. Hey everyone, so I just came off a full day of playing Dead Space Remake. I'm right, that's not quiet because it's quiet, is it? Why is that one quiet? Is it... Sometimes if I've been watching a video on the, the window, uh, I can have it turned down to quiet. That was why. But you don't know with Phil. <laughs> let's see how Phil's using this same medium then. Like, just know uh, one of his Phil shorts. Hey everyone, Phil here. It is Monday, December 26, 2022, and if you missed my stream for today... Then why are you watching this short? It's Monday, December 2022. Already, you've given people a reason to skip off. Haven't you? Like, that's... Do you know what I... I just, like... Phil seems to think that shorts will be displayed to his audience the, the moment he uploads them. They're going to be notified on their phone. And if you're not his audience, you're going to be on YouTube flicking through and there's Phil bang because he's just uploaded it if not why is he talking from December 2022 what purpose does this short have in 2023 this is this is a, uh, an advert for something very time specific I need your help my capture device died today oh this was the I capture device one so that's not a reason to like you're begging for a capture device as part of a short so already, here's like, if you've not skipped off already because you thought this guy looks like my granddad, I mean, unfair for me a little bit to level that at him because we are getting older. But, you know, you've got to understand the market here, the audience. Shorts are being aimed at the TikTok generation who are using TikTok. So you don't have to, um, you can have older people using this medium, but you have to, how do I explain this? Uh, you have to play the game a little bit, don't you? And it's not wearing a Pac-Man t-shirt because Pac-Man's... Like, they don't even know what Pac-Man is. Kids these days that play Fortnite... I imagine there was a Pac-Man tie-in in Fortnite. Most of the audience that were playing Fortnite would say, what is this yellow thing? Why is this in-game? And they'd, and they'd oh, Pac-Man's the original game. Is the best game. Pac-Man's the original game. Fuck off. I'm playing Fortnite. Do you know what I mean? Like... <sighs> 
been using it for eight freaking years. My and the problem with shorts is if someone's not watching, remember the other one? We watched it all the way to the end to see that face. We watched it all the way to the end to see the payoff. And before we knew it, it was playing again. And we let it roll again because we wanted to see the face again. It was funny. You might even show it to a friend. With this, you've had two reasons now to flick off. And if you flick off, if you, you know, um, Twitter lingo, sorry, Twitch lingo, if you swipe left, then the short gets put down in the algorithm. People aren't watching this one. They don't like this one. They skipped off this one. Bin it. So you like in, encourage people to bin off your short, encourage YouTube to put it in the bin by giving it a time state. Like, hello, everyone. This is a specific date in time. I don't care. I'm watching shorts about what day or time it is. Like, oh, 2022. Skip this one. I need something off you. Skip this one. Like, what are you doing? My problem right now is I'm in the middle of a conundrum. Like, you're talking directly to your audience here, Phil. To your actual audience. Well, they, they're on your actual streams. That's where you talk to them in your pre-stream podcast and, and... I can't believe I called it a podcast. In your pre-stream... Before your stream... Uh, that, not, it's not a pre-stream. It is your stream. What am I saying? It is actually your stream. It's not a pre-stream anything. Pre-streams are your streams. You're just doing nothing in them. In your streams, you talk to your audience. They're already there listening. This, in some ways, is for a wider audience. Maybe not... And I'm going to make a case here for not using it as exposure, not using it as advertising like some people seem to think it should be. But at the same time, there is an argument for that. In, in that if you make good shorts, people will come to your channel. But here, why is anyone going to watch this? Uh, my PC is massively outdated, running on Windows 8. Uh, if I were to buy a new capture device, there's no guarantee that it's going to work with this piece. And I'm not going to watch it. That's a bad short. Put up against a good short, you can see why it's so bad. I'm going to pick another couple of... Because he changed, obviously. He has changed his approach to making shorts. But I do want to pick another couple of these. Um, bear in mind as well, YouTube's got a system where if someone's watching your stuff, then they're going to show more people your stuff. And if people stop watching your stuff then they're going to stop showing so many people your stuff. And we're going to talk about views as well a little bit. Hopefully we can fit it all in because I've only got an hour before that being said. But uh, a thousand views on these seems like a lot of views for a YouTube video. But these are shorts. They're beholden to a different algorithm. They are viewed a lot quick, more quickly and you can view a lot more of them in, in an hour. So people are being served a lot more of them. So views on shorts are not as... like You have to get a lot to get a little. In terms of AdSense as well, it's like a tenth of the AdSense or something like that. Something ridiculous. Uh, it, it's not like views and do not equate to the same as a YouTube view. One YouTube view equals about 100 shorts views. Do you know what I mean? Like if I get 10 views on a YouTube video and then I put out a short, I should expect to get 100 views on it at least. Like 10 times my YouTube video, 100 times my YouTube video. Because a YouTube video and a short are on different platforms, different algorithms take different times to view and are being presented at different rates. So popular people making shorts are hitting big numbers. And when I say big numbers, I mean big numbers. But even then, a 15 million short isn't the same as a 15 million YouTube video. Like, it's a different different thing. So let's just have another look at these. Like the short schedule. Phil seemed to think putting his schedule in a short was a good idea. Hey guys, just want to say thanks for a great return day back. A great full streaming week begins. Uh so already, I'm not got any reason to watch this any further if I don't know who this guy is because he's talking to his audience. Hey guys, I want to say thank you for a good streaming week. Uh, what? I haven't watched you. I'm not watching you. I don't know who you are. Skip. Like, what are you doing? Well, today, uh, let's talk about what you can expect on Saturday, November 5th. So, so if you want to do this, then what you should do is you should show the people the things. One of the great rules of media, Phil, I'm talking to you now. Phil, please don't think I'm being horrible to you. Phil, I can improve your life. Show, don't tell. That's lesson one. You go to cinema school. Oh, you don't have to, I'm telling you. Show, don't tell. That's the whole point of the medium. You've got pictures. You're not doing a radio show here, Phil. So if you want to show the schedule, you can have the images of the games, the dates flashing on and off. You know, it, it can happen in second show, don't tell. It's a little bit of editing. Oh, it's some editing. Or just, like, bring up the picture on your obs. Like, Jesus, Phil. First, there'll be a fun episode of the Level 1 podcast starting at 10.45 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, by the way. Pacific Daylight Time, 10.45. Day this is already boring, isn't it? Someone's telling you a timetable. Isn't that boring? So you need to jazz it up a bit if you even want people to watch. More importantly, this is now in the bin. 
November the 5th, 2022, Phil understands something important about legacy content. Legacy content can be viewed in 10 years' time. I will encourage you to get over to my main channel. You're already here because of my main channel, so I don't need to. But um, I will quickly show you my... Uh, I don't even know what my own name is now. Ganji Kid. Make sure you spell it right. Ganji Kid. Take you to this Super Chuffer channel. And on Super Chuffer, you could... It, Forget it. On Super Chuffer channel, if you click on my lives, like recently we did Thus Madly I McCann, Steve's forensic psychologist, Madly I McCann, you can watch that in 10 years' time. It'll still be relevant. Not relevant, but it'll stand alone as a piece of media. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, hopefully some of the... When you talk about legacy content, the idea is that let's say you go and click on it in two years' time, it's still worth a watch. It still makes sense. It's still... Uh, like, E-Girl Simulator, Needy Streamer Overload. We played it for an hour and a half. We played from start to finish of the game. We had a talk about it. That stands alone as an episode. Uh, some things maybe might become more dated, like Flight Simulator 2022 version will become more dated. But talking about flying over the pyramids and talking about the pyramids will always be, you know, the pyramids are going to be there. They have been there a long time. People are still visiting them today. Legacy content. Some of my content can be viewed in five years, in two years, in 10 years, in a few months. It doesn't matter. You can come, you can scroll down and hopefully... That's something I'm aiming for in this content creation is I did a little bit of news. Look, Sue Gray, Boris Johnson, that's irrelevant now. No one a year from now is going to watch whether Liz Truss should be leader of the Conservative Party or not. It's dead. It's gone. It's old chip paper. But Kukiomi 2, consider it more Japanese game where we talked about the differences between Japanese culture and British culture by playing the game. That can still be relevant, can't it? I look at when Dermot presented a TV show called Shattered that can still be relevant. So not relevant in terms of, oh, it's brand new, it's on the trend, but you can still watch it and get something out of it without it being dated and in the bin. So that's legacy content. And you sh every good YouTuber should have legacy content. And Phil understands this because what he's actually doing with his playthroughs is developing legacy content. It might only be a little trickle. It might only be a little bit here and there on a playthrough. But if you type in any game on the internet and want to see someone playing it, Phil has probably played it and has got the full playthrough. So let's say you're stuck on a bit in the middle of... and you can't find it on a guide or whatever. You can probably find it on Phil's playthrough. Legacy content will always be there and it can always be viewed. So this short schedule is like the opposite of legacy content. It's like... In the last day, I'll be saying daylight time because we change our clocks overnight into Sunday, meaning all my streams starting Sunday will be one hour later. Which is confusing, Phil. We'll get on to the, why the schedule is confusing another time, but you love the schedules, but I, I mean... Um, it's time release content. It, this, it feels content here is so time sensitive. By the time the short schedule serves it to you, by the time shorts serves it to you, you've been through your day, you've you know done whatever, and then you're sitting down on the toilet browsing some shorts or whatever. You know, I don't. Kids these days probably watch it more than the telly, like I said. But you skip through, skip through, skip through. This comes up, it's dead in the water, unless you're watching it time sensitive for the right time it's dead in the water and the, sh the schedules for me right the thing i find so funny about them is that they're supposed to fulfill phil thinks they're going to encourage people to turn up at a certain time for a stream but for me they're just confusing like unless you show me the actual image of the schedule and i can just pause it and look at it that's fine but this rambling Oh, it's going to be an hour forward and then on Tuesdays it's going to be two hours back and we're going to play this game in this slot because we were going to play it in this slot but now we're going to play it in the other slot and then Warzone's going to be in the afternoon but in the evening we're going to play Oblivion and we're only going to play Oblivion once this week because after that we're going to play Bassmaster. What? I can't keep all that in my head. Like, what it is for Phil and the reason he does it is it's an anxiety... Um, he doesn't work on his schedule and his admin off stream. He doesn't get things prepared early so he can't sit and think that's okay, that's sorted. So instead, he's on his stream, live in his head, going through things. God, I need to play Bassmaster on Thursday and I'm supposed to be playing Oblivion but I think I might have to move it to Friday. So it's just him. Angst, you know, it's like, you know, before you go on holiday, oh, I'll make sure I've got my passport and I've got the tickets and I'll make sure I'm going to have my shoes packed in the suitcase and I'm going to have the other pair of shoes that I'm going to wear and I don't want to make, forget that, you know, and it's like, shut up. I don't want to hear all this fucking going on. Either do it or show us the schedule or like, but not in shorts. Anyway, not in shorts. Um, you thought it was his way of pretending to be an actual adult. Yeah, it does bring some gravity to what he's doing maybe, but I feel it's like, uh, uh, like... Um, I do it on stream a lot. I talk about the, my plans for the future. 
Like, that's not content. Doing the things is, is content. Talking about what I'm going to do is not content. Like, it's because I want to hype things up sometimes, but also, I think mainly it's because of my own anxiety, like I said. So I think I recognise this in Phil. Again, talking to Phil, you know, this is okay, Phil. You can move on from this. It's not like you're a piece of shit, this one. This one you can work on and fix quite easy. Um, we all have anxieties. Uh, but I think he just doesn't prepare. Do your, sh- your schedule in private and then present it as a as a document and say there it is look at it move on there is no need to make a short out of it it doesn't benefit you in any way in fact it's detrimental because if anyone sees this short any time after this date they're going to skip off it and youtube is going to think this guy his shorts not very good because people skip off them and i'm going to skip off this one now because i don't want to hear any more of this so anyway saturday Podcast at 10.45 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, followed by Gotham Knights. Gotham Knights has been a great game so far. I'm liking it way more than apparently most of the reviewers did. Can't wait for more. I think we're actually going to maybe do the Harley Quinn side quest line and then continue on with the main plot. Late stream tomorrow night will be a chill stream of Disney Dreamlight Valley at 6.45 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Finally getting to a chill stream after a lot of nonstop. It's just him rambling about what he intends to do. It's him and his thoughts and his own stream of consciousness. I'd ask you to try and remember what he was going to do. Because we watched it, I talked, I paused it and I talked. What was before that? What was he going to play before that? He was going to start at 10.45, with his, but the day before. None of us can remember. <laughs> it doesn't serve a purpose, this. That's in the bin. So stop doing that. Okay, he knows to stop doing that now. Now he's decided to start using some some clips. Right, and this is the next step, and, and this makes me angry as well. So before I get too angry, we've got calm, relaxing music in the background. I keep flicking to it just to make sure it's there. Uh, we've got Martin Leaker to get to. We've got Martin Leaker to, to compare him to. But I also want to bring in simplicity as well, because she treads a bit of a, a different... different. Like, I don't know if I should put her up as a lol cow, because I think if uh, if people were bullying her, I would feel like it's my fault, and then I don't want her to get bullied, and she like might feel upset and cry. But at the same time, she's doing these things on the internet and um, like, okay. She played good short, bad short. Because this is actually playing. This is a short. It's playing. It's halfway through. It's not a still image. This is a short. Is it that you can't hear it? Have I done it again where you can't hear it? Because the video, I might have turned the video down. Yeah, it might be that. It might be that. Sorry, I spoiled the snoring short by not being able to hear the snoring. Oh, no, wait, you still can't hear the snoring. So even if you did, even if you did like snoring and thought that snoring was a good thing and that you wanted to watch videos of people snoring, and even if you like that as an ASMR concept because it relaxes you and you want to watch it and it's relaxing and you want to watch it and have someone sleeping so you can sleep and, like, that's the premise here. Why would you want it in a short? <laughs> Shorts are not the right format for that. You want longs, don't you? You want long, big, long videos of snoring. But this is a short of simplicity snoring and if anyone comes across this through their shorts feed they're just going to think it's someone's face with the like at what point do you skip off this immediately surely where's the payoff where's the story where's the narrative where's anything it's just your face and you are actually asleep like actually asleep i think although how have you recorded the short maybe you've edited it out of a bigger media piece there you go look that was a short so I'm going to say bad short on that. But then, and again, there are lots of reasons why you could laugh at this lady. And sometimes she laughs at herself. So I think that's okay if she's like laughing at herself, isn't it? Like making funny faces. Like it's okay. But at the same time, it's like she's possibly self-aware, but maybe not that self-aware. Anyway, let's look at this one. So 
So she's intending to be funny and pull the faces, but I don't know what the story is again. So I'm going to say bad short. And then this one though, actually this short here. So bear in mind this, this lady's not got the best track record of making the best shorts. And I'm a bit uh, about bullying her on the internet, but uh, this one is actually better. This one's better than, than Phil's shorts, look. Boom, 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 yeah. Can you tell why? Can you tell why? First of all, it's actually a TikTok. So that's a step up from a short already. And uh, she's got the music on, hasn't she? She's got that music. Now look at this. TikTok's doing a filter. TikTok's doing a filter. So although... Oh, it turned her into something... That's a pleasant payoff. <laughs> That's not finished as a payoff. She's shocked by it. There's her face back again at the end. She's got the old Philip hairline. Let's not go into, let's not go into that. It's bullying her on the internet. Um, but uh, what's interesting here is that she might have stumbled upon it. But she's and it's got the boom ding. That's a TikTok. Everyone loves that psychologically drummed into your brain, isn't it? psychologically drummed into your brain. It makes you think you've been watching people doing funny dances somewhere in your in your memory. Um bum, bum, bum. Yeah. Uh, I'm saying I want more AI feel from his pre-stream slides. Maybe not. Um <laughs> although I do make that same AI, AI content and post it on Twitter and I'm surprised that he's posted it on his thing when I'm posting it on Twitter as a joke and he's posting it there as a serious but here the story's in built look she doesn't know hmm putting an interesting face with expression that creates part of a narrative hmm she's good at that I would give her that I'd say she should probably do more comedy than, than ASMR or maybe she should do ASMR comedy and lean into that but like she's made a face she's having a, a, a thought and TikTok is doing its thinking so you're in the middle of a narrative now what, what will happen I'm expecting something to happen. And now something is happening. Something different, like, you know. Bum, 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 yeah. And then just before you have time to click off, which should have probably come a little bit quicker, it skips back to her face and you're shocked. And she is shocked. So even though, like, this is not the best short in the world, that's a good one. You're going to watch... If you flick onto that short initially... In my opinion, and you should probably edit off the TikTok bit at the end and, you know, make it shorter because now you're giving people a reason to skip off instead of go to your TikTok, they're going to skip on to the next short. But, like, remember, shorts are not an advertising medium insofar as you're putting your logo in front of them and asking them to click on your video. That's not how it works. How it works is if I like this short, I click down here and go to your channel and I look at all your other shorts. And if I like all your other shorts... This is how YouTube works, what people are doing with their thumb when they're scrolling. Then eventually I might click over to your videos and watch one of your videos eventually. But if you want to make shorts and make good content and shorts, you don't need me to click onto your videos. That's a step too far. Remember these chuffers? Do you, want, do you think they want me to click on their videos? No, they just want me to watch another one. what I'm talking about. They want you to watch another... You're a big fan of that one, Derek. Um, they want you to watch another one of their shorts. Another one of their shorts. Because when you're a TikTok creator, like, we're YouTube creators. We're the old vanguard. We're looking at talking for hours, keeping people interested, going on and on, making three-hour-long podcasts, five-hour... Like, Phil streaming all fucking day. All day streaming. That's not what these people are doing. These people are making one carefully thought out well edited, well shot, well lit short. It takes 60 seconds to watch. It takes them about two hours to make and that's their job done. They're not doing six hours of streaming. They don't need to. Modern media, <laughs> there's power in brevity. Like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not like them in terms of, uh, like, I am old. <laughs> what am I saying? Like, I sound like Phil now. I'm not going to do that because I'm old. But like, uh, 
I've chosen a different path, we can say that. There's room in this world for all different kinds of media. But it must be understood that Shorts is not an avenue to advertise your long-form six-hour podcast because people who are watching Shorts are interested in watching the 60-second Shorts. They don't want to watch a six-hour podcast. They're busy watching Shorts. <laughs> so, like... Like I think everyone that makes shorts, actually, all of us need to learn this lesson a little bit because it does lead through. I'll show you something else, actually. I'll contradict myself a little bit here. YouTube. Let's have um, uh, Kettle Toro. Let's have Kettle Toro. Kettle Toro makes shorts about Genshin Impact. I play Genshin Impact. I get a lot of these shorts come up on the other channel that I watch Genshin Impact on on YouTube. So these are brilliant shorts. She brings in something else, the words, and I'll show you. Trust me, you'll never guess what I'm looking forward to the most in Lantern Right. It's not the free time fate. See how the words, you might not understand Genshin Impact. It doesn't matter. You're following those words that are popping up on the screen. She's saying them, but they're bothered to edit the words on top. So now you're reading words. If you're engaged in reading a, a, a script, a, a sequence of words, then the next word, what is it? You don't know. But now you're engaged in the narrative. You're actually physically engaged in it. You're reading it. That's a very clever trick shorts can can incorporate. Nor the free four star. It's a canon Genshin ship. And it was even hidden in this part of the trailer. I bet you've never noticed this, but... I bet you don't know something. Well, I'll tell it you. What a format for a short. In 60 seconds, I bet you don't know something, but I'll tell it you. That's brilliant, isn't it? That gives you a reason to watch. It gives you some value in the short. And they're telling you at the start, this is what you're going to learn in this short. Very clever. You must yeah. know this before a lantern ride begins. Your world has a cheater. A cheater enabled by Lumine herself. Let me explain. If you take a stroll around the Air Harbor, you may encounter a lady in pink who, for some reason... Ooh, mystery. Interesting. Music. Edited. Proper. Good shorts. So then what you might do is you might say, who is this streamer making these shorts? Do they make any... You know, any content I might want to watch. Yes, look, they do. They live stream sometimes. They do it on Twitch as well. I like this game. I like this stream. I might get into that in that way. Um, if I put Genshin Shorts, there's another couple of people that make this point really well. Genshin Shorts. And Phil, I hope you're listening again, because this is really important for you here. Really important. So, Genshin Shorts. I don't want to buy some shorts with Genshin Impact on them, you chuffers. Uh, I want to just see a short from somebody who typifies what I'm saying because I are a couple. Um, this one will do. This one will do. Look at Mona's ass. It's like a clip, isn't it? It's like a clip from a stream. What the f***? Mona! Mona! What are you doing? But what's happening, right, is it's not like when Phil does a clip from a stream. We're going to get to this point now, I suppose. Phil will clip a stream. Phil's... Piece de resistance, his best sort of short at the moment. Whoever's making them for him, this is what Phil's doing. What the f*** is that? What the f*** is that? What the sh oh! 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 Look! Demon pants! Oh my god, it's back! What's, what's happening here is this is reaction content. Something's happening in the game and Phil is reacting to it. So he's beholden to the game to do something interesting or funny and then he's going to react to it and in Phil's mind because he's still thinking in 1990 or 2001 this is enough now if you play Fortnite you will see bullshit clipping into the like my uh, my character disappeared my car disappeared like it happens every fucking game like the, the, the bugs are untrue like it doesn't mean that people are constantly clipping these bugs and uploading them as shorts and everyone's laughing and having a great time it means that no one cares anymore because it's just a bug in a game and it's funny for about two seconds now you've seen that amount of it that's all you need to see the pants are back look blood comes out of them what is going on? I don't know, but I don't care anymore because it's still going on and there's no payoff and there's no narrative and there's no structure to this. The pants won't go away. Why are all the enemies glitched? This one's... So, what you could do here, and there was a really good video of all the glitches in Fallout 76, wasn't there, by... Uh, I'll, bring, I'll open another window. More windows than Buckingham Palace, mate. Um, Fallout 76. Like, this is about context as well. Because remember, someone's viewing this short, they're just scrolling through the shorts, and now they're getting a thing about video games and, and a glitch. Um, Fallout 76 glitches. Who was it? It was... 
Joseph Anderson, of course, yeah. Um, they edited all of their glitches into a really long video. Like, that's a good idea. It was the two and a half hours. Uh, and you can just hear for yourself. Sorry, three hours. Three hours of, of constant I'm glitches, what? repeating themes. And so what came out of it was... Uh, and the, the, the narration over the top was quite nice as well. It was a really chill, excellent video to watch this. Them, and then, like this Grafton troll monster, it will react to you, fight you, and then in the middle of that fight, it will just stand there and eat your bullets for a little while. Uh, so it gives context to the glitches, it provides pace, and because they're repeating themes, like, oh, this glitch came back, and remember this glitch, well, now it's here twice, and like it creates a narrative. So now you're watching something that's worth watching, and you've got uh, a reason to watch it. It's called The Thousand and One Glitches. You know there's going to be some really interesting ones coming up. And on top of that, you're involved in a story, and you know, you're not, you know, it's a playthrough almost, but it's given a, a clever edit to the playthrough, a clever narrative that you're involved with, and it's interesting and different and, and whatever, yeah? But you compare that to what Phil was doing. Too many windows now, of course. Don't need Limmy anymore. Bye bye, Limmy. You compare that to what Phil's doing, and Phil, listen to this. Uh, this is, it lacks all that context. So now someone's scrolling on shorts, and here's a glitch from a video game. And it better be glitch a damn too. fine glitch. Because it doesn't even look like a glitch. That could be an enemy in a video game. Without the context, without knowing about Dead Space and what those enemies are supposed to look like, and all this, like, you're just out in the middle of the sea, just like, oh, there's a thing. Fighting invisible enemies. So your reaction has to make the rest of the content. Now, this is a really important thing, Phil. Look how it's been edited. Underneath this words and, f and typing is your face. But because you've put all these hashtags on it, you can't see your face. Because you've put your face underneath the words, you can't see your face. So, um, uh, I, hello, Cat Buddy Hoover. Uh, I'll quickly take this. I don't want to make you feel bad. Uh, I don't like the wheelchair meme. I'm not going to delete it or anything. Uh, I'll, leave, I'll leave it there, and I'm not going to make you feel bad about it. But uh, I don't use that, and I won't really want it in my in in my ballpark because uh, I think that by saying that Phil's audience are like wheelchair people, it's like unfair to wheelchair people who like are not dickheads they're just people in wheelchairs like, i understand that the meme like phil's audience are retarded I'll, I'll say words i don't care i'm on the internet i don't care the, the meme is that phil's audience are retarded and like you know when i was growing up i used to call kids retards all the time but these days it's just not the done thing is it it's like unfair to people with down syndrome who are retarded and actually really nice people and like don't have like there's no negative association to retardation in in this context but we call these field supporters dents and wheelchairs i don't um I, I i think we need a new terminology for them they are some of them probably in some way quite um puerile <laughs> but uh yeah yeah okay you're just memeing it you know you you understand the context and concept of what i'm saying so i don't need to go on about it um and i I don't, you know, I'm not angry at you for doing it or anything. It's a constant thing that happens in the field world. But um, I will, in my streams, I'm going to say no thanks to that. But anyway, yeah. Um, the uh, the thing here that Phil doesn't understand or the editor doesn't understand is how the medium is being viewed on a phone. You can't see Phil. He's underneath all the writing. And uh, sorry, I will take your actual con con content here as well. Your actual. Uh, Phil's oblivion short arriving at the party 17 years too late to make fun of a glitch everyone's already seen exactly yeah like who cares about oblivion 17 years too late at least this one's a modern game but you need to edit it differently so that his face is at the top and then maybe zoom into the face when he's making the noises you know create some other visual entertainment out of it because Phil's not just entertaining on his own you need to zoom in put the words on screen make some you know maybe use colour or something editing tricks to make this seem more interesting captivate the attention Imagine you're making an uh, advert for a five-year-old and you have to keep editing and cap because it's a very short thing and not much is actually happening here. What the frick? Whoa! It's dark, it's hard to see, it's on a phone, it's small. Like, think of all these things. Oh my god! Can I impale the stinky shorts? See, that, that's what I was talking about, zooming in, making a thing of it. They've tried that a little too little, too little too late, I think, because look at where we're at in the video now. We're nearly the end. And think about the colour as well. You could make this colour pop better, couldn't you? You could make him look better by colour grading it. I knocked him into the afterlife, I guess. Well, 
That's how you exercise the demons in Dead Space Remake right there. And that's his funny line, like his funny quote at the end that, you know, it's like the payoff. It's not really worth watching, was it? <laughs> it doesn't really hit in the same way. I'm going to go back to this. This is obviously, uh, that's not exactly who I wanted anyway. I'm going to change this person because I don't think she's doing the exact job I want of exemplifying this because there are some people who really exemplify this. In a, th th this is the guy. This is the guy. Right. Bear in mind, this is 1.1 million views. So, Phil, you can't argue. You've got to accept this is what you should be doing differently and better. Right. First of all, Doro, 44C here. Doro is a Genshin Impact streamer, which means if I tune into his stream, he'll be playing Genshin Impact. He might do other things here and there. No, he's not a variety streamer like you, Phil. He's a Genshin Impact streamer. So it makes sense that he's making a, a, a short about Genshin Impact doesn't it? Because he's a Genshin Impact streamer. Phil will never commit to a game long enough, except for Street Fighter 2, which doesn't have a community around it. And the only um, shambolic framework of a community around a tired old game is a bunch of people who love it so much that they're really into it and they're committed and they know who Phil is and they hate him. So you can't use that game. But you like play one game, not every day, not all the time, but all the time, like, be committed to it and be part of a wider community. That's what gaming is these days. You've got Fortnite streamers. You've got Genshin Impact streamers. Asmongold is a World of Warcraft streamer, but he's a variety streamer, isn't he? His commitment to World of Warcraft, his stature in that one community enabled him to grow develop a lot of content. Now he can talk about all the different MMOs. Now he talks about all different variety. But by being committed to that one game, he was able to grow. Like, I don't think Phil would understand or agree with this concept in the same way as I'm explaining it. I personally don't necessarily think every variety streamer needs to do this. But if you're doing gaming content and you're on the internet and this is the way that everyone else is doing it and making a success, consider one, two days, three, you know, your whole week of streaming you could every morning play one particular game or, you know, one game that becomes stable. And like, there are people that still play Skyrim, still mod Skyrim, still have a community around Skyrim. Then you'll be making Skyrim shorts for an audience of people that will understand and you'll understand the audience and you'll have something to say. Look at this. This, this is different from what Phil was doing. Look at how different this is. Over 184. The Haran on him at R2 level 90. So already we've got editing, we've got memes, we've got music, used like sound effects, but also we're talking about quite specific things within a game that it's not universal, not everyone understands this. Genshin players will understand that. But then he's talking to Genshin players, isn't he? So this is captivating. Like This for a Genshin player is like, oh, that's a really interesting setup on a character. This is really... No, also, this guy's not brought this up himself. Someone's come to his stream. This is part of the community. He's playing cooperatively with people on, on the internet. Oh, Phil can't do that because they'll all troll him. Yeah, but like this guy's involving his community and his short is they're teaching him something. He's learning it and he's looking at it and he's going to explore it. See how we got the words up as well? Oh, whoa, 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 picture? No, no. Why picture in picture? Why did it do that? Don't do that to me. Why the fuck? Where do Where? you live? All right, Kai okay, is at back, level back, 90, back. 61 over 184. The Haran on him at R2, level 90. Interesting. EM Sans. Very good rolls on that goblet. Attack goblet and then a crit damage circle with some crit right on there. C6 Kaya. So we're being taken on a bit of a story. Now, I know this is a little bit boring for non-Genshin players. And even for me as a Genshin player, I think this is a bit specific. We'll look at some of these quickly. You know, I want to get through a few more shorts and make this point. Um, but there's a story going on. Now what I want to see is this character in action, yeah? 10, 13, 13. How does this work? Let's see. So it's a constant melt with Kaya's ultimate ability and C6 Benny. And it's just a self melt. That is like so big brain, dude. I have never seen a Kaya like that before. Yunjin ult, Benny ult, Sucro swirl, Kaya ult, and then just attack. What? 
where did she go? So you get it, don't you? Like, it's a story. He's met somebody online. They're showing them his character. His character's really cool and interesting. And if you're into this game, you'll understand that, which is why it's so important to be part of a game to commit to... to um, like you're a streamer who just every time you get a fulfill this is I'm talking as well every time you get a foothold Skyrim shorts with cat would work <laughs> every time you get a foothold into something you move on to something else like every time you start oh I'm here to watch Warzone right I'm only playing this just once a week and then I'm going to play something else tomorrow and something different oh, I'm not here then I want to watch Warzone I'll go and watch a Warzone streamer I want to watch you know if you're going to play like this and commit to it Warzone's the closest thing he's got at the moment to a regular isn't it like regular do it more often and be a Warzone streamer who also does variety for a bit or this thing and then you can build up on that and you can make shorts about it and you can get into the community you can understand the game deeper and then you can talk more authoritatively on it or even have your audience show you things live on camera and enjoy the being part of the community um, I think that's a good move maybe I'm wrong for Phil maybe Phil should move more into variety I don't do this as much I Genshin stream, but I don't go as far as making these sort of shorts. But I think this is the way to go if I wanted to, you know, if I wanted to push this more. Um, also, I want to pick on a couple of these that are... Um, like, there's loads of shorts here, you see. Bear in mind, if you're going to be watching someone for their shorts, their stream might not be as interesting and fun as their shorts. Their shorts might be really like what people are watching. And that's okay, because if you're getting 700,000 viewers on a short... And you're not getting... I, I doubt he gets 700,000 on his streams. But it's not about getting a trickle... It, there is also a payoff. People come and watch your streams. But more importantly, as a shorts creator, people watch your shorts. <laughs> All right, whatever. We got him. I mean, you have a, even a, a, a sat and a half. You went rogue. <clears throat> what was that? Are you kidding me? Go so it's very like Phil this is. It's something that happened during a game while I was playing. But here, we've got it edited. It's talking to... The reason it happened to him is because he was talking with chat and he wasn't paying attention. So they've edited the words up and they've created the story. Like, oh, he's almost... Oh, my God. You stop shooting lasers at me. Why are you running? Why are you running? It shoots... Memes in that there. Lasers? All right, whatever. We got it. And this was a cool thing in the game that everyone discovered that thing shooting lasers at you. Like, we all know, like, we all shared a moment as well. It's not just one thing happened to me. It's, do you remember, we all shared this moment when that thing first shot lasers at us. Um, he's not giving me the best examples as well, because he's got so many memes, I don't know where to find the ones I want that I think are his best ones. But uh, his best ones are where chat tells him something, he goes and does it, and then he's like, wow, this is amazing. Like... This will be an Easter egg. This will be like Bro, it. did you know? Yeah, this uh, is it. Look, someone in chat has said, did you know? Uh, when you go to Ching Yung Peak at 1 a.m., you can hear Shao call his death friends? No way. Is that for real? Could you imagine Phil playing a game and someone saying in chat, did you know that if you go and do this interesting thing, this interesting thing happens, and Phil, like, involving them, using them as a thing on the... Like, I'm about to test that out. Let's go Eight, and test seven, it out. One, all right. Confirm. Like we're playing let's the game together. Let's see if we can hear this, if this is true, if Shao... And we're going on a story now, because if you go over... Like, this guy might know it, might not. It doesn't matter. We're on a story now, and Zhao, the words are up, and the time is going, like, you're in oh, a narrative. You can hear Shao. If I hear him go, worthless, worthless. A joke. Cry. chat on screen you can hear the weird thing he's gonna be like no way so is that supposed to be Sha why is that supposed to be shao though interesting people say it's shao because his uh, adeptus form is a bird oh also shao plays flute oh so that's the theory so that's like so it's like a little thing we did together on stream and it's like an easter egg in the game and there's a story there and there's a reason to watch it if you like the genshin impact and the content and if you do like genshin impact and the content you're now thinking should i watch doro now, after watching a series of his shorts, I might consider having a look at his videos or his streams. But look, check this out. His videos, 58k views, 29k views. Please note that shorts get a dramatically inflated number, like 300,000 here. 200,000, 400,000. It's like 10x on shorts. That's not because oh wow he's got loads of views on his shorts but his videos aren't doing that well it's because shorts get more views there's like they're a different thing it's like tiktoks get more views they happen quicker you see more of them they're fed to you more quickly people are skipping through them like phil seems to think that if i got a thousand views on a youtube video that's the same as if i got a thousand views on a short it's not if i get a thousand views on a short it's not very good 
unless I'm at like 10 views on my YouTube videos. But if you're at like 20K, 70K, 40K on your YouTube videos, your shorts are getting 10X that. And do you know what? What would you rather have? People watching your shorts or people watching your videos? Well, I'm trying to make adverts so that people watch my videos, please. And then when people watch my videos, that's an advert for people to come over and watch my stream on Twitch. Yeah? Yeah, that happens. It's like a trickle-down effect, isn't it? It happens. 1.8K views, 800 views, 1.4K views, but not not like, not loads. Not as many as are just watching the damn shorts. So if you can monetize the shorts and shorts is a content creation format, why aren't you just making shorts? Do you know what I mean? Like, you need to think of shorts in that way. Like, they are their own thing. They're not adverts for you. They can work as adverts. At the end, you've got your little logo and people might click through, yes. But, and it is... Um, said to every streamer you should use shorts as your advertising mechanism use it as clips and bits from your, you know make people come and watch your streams but we've got clips clips exist you can just watch the clips on youtube clips on twitch this is not a clips it's not clip your things up there the reason these shorts are good doro and the reason phil's is bad phil is because doro is creating a narrative using editing and it's not just i something happened to me and i clipped it that's a clip Clips are dead. Forget clips. Shorts are a medium where you're creating something else. You're creating a short video, like a very short one, like a sketch, like a skit, you know, like a little soundbite even, like shorter the better sometimes. You're creating a meme. You're, you're using these memes as part of your medium. Like, that's all important. Very important. It's all coming together. So let's see the Drew. You guys doing Gellifor? What? He just started drinking right in front of me. That's pretty rude. Any rumors? Hey, you're the one they call the hero of Kavash. He won't stop Aren't drinking. You? The one that closed the Oblivion Gate and saved the He's city. a ventriloquist. He can emote and talk while he's drinking. Look at that. I've never oh, seen anything like that before. I mean, that's just bad, isn't it, really? Like, it doesn't have any of the surrounding, like, aspects... Hey Dora, I found a place in Mondstadt where you can glitch the climbing animation on tall characters, Jungly, Al Haytham, Ido, into crawling on their hands and knees. How? How? I want to know. I want to know now. So you said go to Valley of Remembrance, which I think is this. See the difference? Oh, Phil's not a. Remember, Phil's not a um, children's entertainer, is he? So you know, Phil wouldn't be into doing this. But you see the difference? Like, we're going to see something interesting that happens in the game, but we're going to surround it with context and and take you on a narrative and a, a story. That's like what the point is of the short. One, right? And now you said there was a shell. And the streamer himself is being led by chat, is being guided by other people. It's a community effort in a way. It, that's the feel that you get about the stream. So if anything's gonna advertise the stream, it's the idea that you could turn up, interact, and it might even, you know, the stream might listen to you and might might end up doing something like this. Here? Oh, with the opening, I see it, I see it, I see it. And then jump. <laughs> yes! We got Zhongli on his hands and knees, baby! Not sus for science. Oh my god! <laughs> Have you guys played Metal Gear Solid? Snake, your mission is to extract the enemy commander. The clap of my ass cheeks keeps alerting the guards. Try not killing anyone, okay? You got this. All right, let's do it. So, that's a good short. Yeah, that's a good short. In contrast... Go ahead. Please. Now he. <laughs> what is going on? What is this glitch where they all they're all chugging drink? They're all drunks. Here, tell me some rumors while you drink. You heard about the fighters guild members <laughs> tearing up a tavern in Leowin? As if they didn't have enough. Isn't it? It's like you know you're saying as well about like him coming to this 17 years late. It's like he's behind the times in some way. He doesn't understand or perceive it in what way. It's a strange, strange thing. And then this is his best short ever then, so. What, they put me in with one second. And when I first saw this, I thought, has he been to a basketball game? But then I realized that quickly that it's a computer game, so. Oh, what? 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 Someone threw a, a ball in the hoop on a computer game. Just lacks any sort of, and if you wanted it to mean something, then you could have edited in no. Uh, oh, there's only two minutes left in the game now, and I'm nearly about to win. And oh god, I should win this game. And like, what? They're bringing LeBron on. Why would they be doing that? No, he's not gonna oh, slow mo. It's in. Oh my god! Like, you need to build the story into it. It can't just be like from the very start. LeBron shoots the ball. He hits the goal. That's the end of the game. Like what? What? I do not what the? 
off! Because everyone that watches this is either confused or disorientated or it re doesn't care. Like, what happened in your video game once when someone threw a ball is just not a moment. What the Did you see that? What? What? And all this title stuff down here as well disturbs me. Like, why have we got all these hashtags? Why have we got all this writing? People aren't watching shorts and reading the the titles on the shorts to decide whether they should click on them. It's not you can't clickbait a short with a title. It should just be really short and to the point. The title because it's a short and it's the image they see like in front of them that's going to make them want to click on it. And thinking and yeah, hashtag cat was the best hashtag because thinking that YouTube works because people type in hashtags and then receive videos that are like Venn diagrams, like I said, if that's the case, then you're going to have people who like LeBron, people who like gaming, put the Venn gram together. Now you've got a smaller niche, right? Take that, people who watch things that are comedy, and then the NBA 2K game specifically. Like, let's put those. No, you don't have to hashtag any of that. Hashtag shorts, because it's shorts. It's in the gaming category already, because you've put it in a category when you upload it so gaming your handle is dsp gaming you're a gaming channel so you don't have to put gaming you can bin that off lebron james is in the video so hashtag lebron james maybe uh, but it's not really lebron james is it anyone who looks looking for lebron james on the internet doesn't give a shit about your computer game so bin that off nba 2k maybe again maybe maybe put these hashtags in the description of the video as well and not in the title. Maybe it's irrelevant to have them in the title. And uh, YouTube actually makes it very clear when you uh, upload a video, it says tags, and it says, just to be clear, this is usually used for people who misspell things. <laughs> so like if I'm t uploading a Genshin Impact video, I might use a tag, uh, Genshin Impact, instead of Impact, because Impact is a, mis is a common misspelling. Um, and then you hash that brings in those people. I don't know, but th this is terrible. With the win. What? It needs to end now. To lose a close game, what? To win what? 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 What am I looking at? I'm looking at the audience on a computer what? game. What? Are you out of control? Like any aspect that you think might be interesting or relevant is the reaction and we can't see it so it's not any good as a piece of media it's like someone brings you an interview and they haven't recorded the sound or they haven't recorded in this case the image of the person talking and they say oh no but it's a really good interview you could use it for your tv show and you say i could use it for my tv show if you'd recorded the visuals but you didn't so now it's in the bin sorry <laughs> like it's just not good enough so that's bad uh we've only got 15 minutes before um that being said so they will be late of course um, we've got a little bit calm, more calming, relaxing music. I will want to chill out. What I want to do, I've, I hope I've made the point to Phil here, first of all, um, which is that you can create a short piece of media. Now, there's something I want to finish on with Phil, and then I'm going to watch a couple of Martin Leakers and just laugh the chuff out of him for 10 minutes, and then we'll go and watch that being said. But uh, what I want to make a, a plea to Phil here, because Phil, please, I, I, you know, I hope you watch this, is that you don't have to go as to this extent. You don't have to be a children's entertainer, but you do have to be an entertainer because you are creating media. So people watch media for entertainment. You could be an informer, not a police informer. Like You could be informative, like a journalist, but you're really not that, are you? Let's face it, you get games and play them and tell people your feelings. You do have to lean on entertainment a little bit on the platform of media that's based on entertainment. So Phil, what I would say about Phil, we need another window. Let's use this one, is... What is it? Project 7, isn't it? So we all know that in Project 7, and like we all know this, remember, you'll, you'll get a laugh out of this. It's the glass you'll like, and I You'll like oh, this. That makes <laughs> the detractors will get a laugh out of what I'm going to say, whereas Phil, you know, should just take this on board and understand it. So I just need to get... It. There's two adverts on this one. Still making the money, aren't we? Uh, so Project 7, yeah? You all know what I'm about to say, Phil. The audience... The detractors will get a laugh, but didn't John Rambo get all the, the good lines in this, didn't he? John Rambo, like, they all thought he was the funny one, and he got all the good lines. But really, that's because Phil wrote all the good lines, and Phil was doing all the good work and coming up with all the ideas behind the scenes. You know, it was Phil's ideas, and then they just got all the, the credit for them, and, and people thought they were funny. But actually, it was Phil that was funny. So this sort of stuff that I'm watching here, Project 7, it doesn't have to be these days that you need a camera and a light and a crew and a sound thing these days people are making it on their phones 
this sort of stuff, aren't they really? It's nice if you've got a better microphone and you can do a bit of editing, but otherwise, that's what shorts are these days. That's what we looked at here. These people are doing this on their phones. Like, they're creating these stories and these... Uh, I'm going to turn the music off for this one. Uh, but they're creating, look, edited sequences, characterization, zooms, all that. The, the dog's real. All of that is done on the phone. Yeah. Got the meme face. And so you can make something like Project 7 these days on your phone and turn it just to 60 seconds. Just feel you're smart, you're funny. Do a 60 second joke. Do a Project 7 reboot and make shorts out of, make them short. The Project 7 or the Project 8 shorts program is you make sequences of little short jokes. Like pro that's what Project 7 is, isn't it? It's jokes and things and things done. And, and then you just do them on your phone and then they're shorts. Each one has a start, a middle, and an end. So a setup and a payoff. It's a gamer-based joke. Include some memes. You're doing it here. You're doing it here. That's what this is. I'm not saying cut this into shorts. I'm saying write some shorts that are like this. Project 7 or 8 or whatever you want to call it now. Project 8, no hate. Project 8, no hate. Um, you're the funny one, Phil, remember? You're the... Look, see, it can be done. It can be done. That's what Phil should do his shorts as... That's how he should think of them. That's what I wanted to put in Phil's head. That's what I wanted him to understand, is that your shorts are not an advert for your content. They are content. Do you get that? They're not a clip out of your content. They are content. So most people who are watching shorts these days, when you're watching TikToks, I'm not watching them. I'm a grown-up. <laughs> no, a lot of people these days are watching this sort of stuff, aren't they? And like, let me just put some TikToks on. This is a banana. Mm -hmm. This is the top. This, uh, this is the bottom. Technically, that's actually the opposite, but okay, go ahead. Already you've pissed me off. <laughs> okay. I was going, I'll ask the questions. Yeah. Top, bottom. Mm -hmm. Where do you open this thing? Traditionally. See, now I'm not interested. I don't care. I would have skipped on with this one. But importantly, there's a narrative, there's a story. There's going to be a payoff, isn't there? Uh, I am going to skip on because I don't care. But, you know, this is what the, the people are watching. Sized bananas. <laughs> That's kind of impressive. I told oh, it's a joke. Two, you're very quick. And I eat a banana. Two things. <laughs> very quick. <laughs> One. You pulled it in half. I ha, ha, ha. Hey! Oh! Hey. oh whoa. Okay, you doing doing whoa. Thing, Sorry. First sip. Fails are always good. <laughs> Lots lot of funny fails. Okay, I get it. They're entertaining. So you like you're looking at that, and then in between that, you're getting a fill. You know, you're getting fill come up. So that's what I would say to Phil is just bear in mind where you are, the context, what you're involved in. Um, Phil invented shorts. <laughs> yeah, like bear in mind like what's surrounding your shorts, what other people are watching before and after your shorts. Go and watch a load of shorts. Probably watch the really good ones that are getting the millions of views. Think about how you can create something in the same vein. And you can, Phil. You've got lights, you've got LEDs, you've got a phone, you've got ideas, you're a chuffer. Get on with it. But please stop abusing shorts. Stop abusing shorts. That's what I want to say to Phil. Think of them like content. Right, Flat Earth British, we've got, what, uh, 10 minutes before that being said. I'm keeping an eye on it. I've got it in another window, look. You ready? Boom, I've got it there as well. So if if it comes on, we'll just go over there. Eight minutes though, so don't worry, eight minutes. Uh, and when it comes on, I'll turn off my stream and go over there, and so will you, won't you? We won't. You know what I'm talking about, anyway. <laughs> Flat Earth British, I wanted to say, because Martin Leaker, I wanted to make, I've advertised Martin Leaker in the title of this video, so I wanted to include him. He makes some of these bad shorts as well, the Flat Earth British shorts, but at least he's got something to say. Anyway, look. Oh, I've got him on quiet, wait. Platforms to infinity thrice. Um, I'm going to dazzle all of you tonight at nine o'clock GMT. We've got, like, literally a mind-blowing show ready. So he's doing the same thing as Phil, isn't he? After everything we've just learned, number one, You've got to start making an effort, lads. <laughs> You've got to start making an effort. You can't just be unkempt and disorganised and dirty all the time. Phil, it, it's a bad look for your audience. Martin is a thought leader and looks confused. So, you know, just think about that a little bit, right? Number two, this is irrelevant to me now. Nine o'clock has gone by. I'm looking at this weeks later. <laughs> for tonight, I can't believe how much 
we've placed together in one week. I'm, I'm actually cooking a roast dinner at the moment, okay? As you can see, I'm making... Okay, so this short is an advert for your show later, which is about Flat Earth British and conversation, and you're doing a roast dinner, which has no connection. You appear to have got everything out of all of the cupboards as well. In preparations for a beautiful Welsh lamb roast. I know, I know, but, you know, I'm Welsh. Um, Not vegan. And I think the potatoes, I'm peeling potatoes, okay, are trying to tell me something. What do you think the potatoes are trying to tell me? Hmm? So... You've got a slightly strange shaped potato. Now, permit me, permit me a, a brief, just permit me briefly here, Martin, briefly um, to, Martin, let, let me permit me briefly just to, to critique you slightly. Like, if you consider what's on the internet, and what people are watching and what when you're sliding through shorts and skipping through shorts what you're watching and then you found a slightly strange shaped potato what you need to have in your brain as a media producer is a sort of they call it a news gate for the news not everything goes on the news there's a shooting every day we don't hear about it because you can't get everything on the news it's only half an hour on the damn program come on we're gonna have to just have the big stories about the politicians and about this and that and then there's a gate isn't there the newsgate, and it's important as media producers, us as independent media producers, consider our own mental newsgate about what we allow onto our streams, what we choose to project, and you know what's worthy. And I would argue, Martin, that a funny shaped potato does not make it through the newsgate. <laughs> yeah. Love wins the day. Anyway, mighty flat thumbs. Sorry. Flat thumbs. So it's like a little video that imagine you had a friend, right? And then you called them up and you were doing a little chat on your your phone and you were like, oh, I found a funny potato, look. Imagine you called your friend to, to show them the funny potato. Your friend would probably say, can you fuck off now? I'm busy. <laughs> or like talk about something else, you know. <laughs> but they wouldn't alight on the potato. They wouldn't make big of the potato. They wouldn't say, do you remember that, you know, down the pub later, bring the potato, would they? <laughs> They're not going to be like, listen, uh... <laughs> Do you remember that time Martin had that potato? So if it's not going to make that grade, don't put it on the internet as a short. That's a bad short, Martin. Bad shorts. Bad shorts. Uh... This is a Tatarian Liberation Army survival tip. Module number one. Waterproof. So you've got to bear in mind first impressions as well, maybe. Like, this obviously clearly is a skit, isn't it? Because you're wearing your mum's sunglasses so but it also looks kind of threatening and strange doesn't it it also looks kind of threatening and strange for a broad audience um still i'm gonna go with it as a skit at least you're making an effort Finn, your matches so get some matches okay and dunk them in some that looks incredibly dangerous doesn't it i know what you're trying to say but to waterproof a match like, this isn't a survival tip that you need to tell me, Martin. Out in the wilds, to waterproof a match, the way they used to do it when they first created matches, because they were quite flammable, the fucking things, because they made them so that you could strike anywhere at one point, and that became a, a danger, because they were carrying them around in there. But like, matches have been going for a long, long time, remember? You wouldn't know because of your funny flat-earth history, fake history bullshit, but um, they did. They used to dunk them in, in wax to seal the match, and then you can strike. When you strike, obviously, the wax comes off, and you can strike the match, and it'll melt the wax, and it'll be on fire. And even wax is a... a you know, paraffin wax is a, um, a a fuel, isn't it, in a way? So you can do this. However, right, <laughs> doing it while the candle's lit with your funny sleeve over the candle, I, if you, I bet if you go through a full box of matches, you're going to inadvertently light one or two on fire. This just looks like a health hazard, Martin. Candle wax. Okay. He's had the good sense to blow Freshly it out. Freshly made candle wax. To spit it out. He spit the, the candle out. And then, dunk in the water. Yeah. Which is your tsunami. Okay. Right, let's see if this remains waterproof. So you just dunked it in water. Off. Okay, let's give it a strike. Here we go. Waterproof to match. Ow! No, that landed on my bollocks. Right, so basically you're just playing with matches, like your short is, I'm dressed as a nutter and I'm playing with matches. So it did have a story, I'll give him that, how to waterproof a match. There was no payoff, you didn't even see the match paid off at the end. And 
I would argue that in today's day and age, this is an irrelevance. <laughs> like, it's not a survival tip, is it? It's not a real... So it's a joke. It's a weird joke that has no payoff or joke. I would probably think again, like, again, would I call up my friend and do this face-to-face down the, the phone? Should I put it on the internet? <laughs> Maybe think twice about the... For Martin, I think, keep recording these, but don't upload them all. You're in review. This is nice. Out with his son. It's a sausage. It's a, they've got a little boat and they do the boat up. I don't approve of the music. There he is. My son just calls bullshit. It is bullshit. Why did you used to meet somebody that had that? Okay, I, I can't stand this anymore. It's just like a series of strange random edits. So I, I, that's not a good short. <laughs> Hello, Martin. Firms. Happy New Year to you all. Happy so New Year to you. I put an interesting community uh, message out uh, today concerning how many people think this is a simulation we live in. <laughs> interesting comment back from my brother, David Mannell, who is Trinity 4 for men, who seems to think it's some sort of projection, which we encode. So you're on the internet putting out a community post reading back the responses from the community post on your computer, using your phone to record a digital video that is going straight up on the internet to talk to the Flat Earth community about whether we're in a simulation or not. <laughs> I mean, how do I grade this one? I agree. I think we encode it through our thoughts, our emotions and our speech. But there is something that you maybe should know. The enemy uses sound. Audio is death. So why are you talking? I'm going to have to turn the volume off. He said the enemy uses sound, the audio is death. I'm going to turn the volume off. That didn't help. It's the phone. It's the phonograph. Maybe this is the reason why certain people had a vow of silence in the past. Maybe. So he's using his phone to record himself complaining about the phone. Like, I don't like this as a concept. I think it's ill thought out and it doesn't make any sense. So Martin Leake goes in the bin. Now, I, I, just gonna, I haven't got enough time now in today's episode to go over this, but Martin Leake makes particularly bad episodes. It's not just you, Phil, if you're watching. Martin Leake is a bad chuffer as well. But uh, we need to keep, uh, keep up with Martin, so we're going to be doing some more episodes about Martin in the future. I'm going to be on this B-side channel doing streams in the evenings on Battery Exhausted, uh, intermittently but I'm going to try more and more to get on here so that I can you know build up and uh, this is the place like my main channel Super Chuffer that's my main channel and that's going to have our serious content and so I've also got this other channel Battery Exhausted I consider what we did today less serious content <laughs> so check out the less serious content up there um, there will be more there will be more so you be good, my little Pukos. Uh, I think now's a good time to go and get a drink and a snack. And uh, get a drink and a snack. You don't... She don't... What's she got? Drink and a snack and some... There you go. Drink and a snack. Whatever that is. Get yourself a drink and a snack. And it's time for the group think, isn't it? Although, they edge us, don't they? They edge us. <laughs> The edges. Is it on? Is it on yet? Are we just waiting for it? Are we waiting for it? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll join you over there. I don't know how to raid it. Like, I'd quite like to raid it and send any of our viewers over there. But since I don't know how, uh, yeah, get over there. Get on that and I'll see you anon. <laughs>